those who are with us. If they were imbued with religious ideas, they will put it in their song outside. i give you a good example about our cultural musicians in those days. The folklore of the past is so much embedded in them that they bring out in their modern music. And people enjoy it and dance differently from the past according to the uh, music of today. Folklore. But without the idea of the folklore, they couldn't put into, they wouldn't be able to put into music. The same thing when some people said they are gospel uh, musicians. Their music cannot go beyond their knowledge of the gospel. If they don't have the correct knowledge of the gospel, they will sing it with uh, uh, bad doctrine. <laughs> but if they have the cor correct knowledge, they will sing it according to the correct way. So how do we imbue our musicians with Christian ideas? Uh, I am Mike Lola Tunji Fagu. I was born 85 years ago. I'm four months now. There's a truth in there saying that uh, they weren't so much encouraged by our church because uh, we take. Uh, the choir granted too much in the Catholic Church, which is not so in the other Protestant churches, because the core of their service is more of, more of a reading, singing, and they are very good singers. And after singing some words of a teacher, that is the head of their service. But for us Catholics, we have the core of our service in uh, the Mass, the Blessed uh, Sacrament as the call for uh, adoration and uh, Sunday service. And as such, the choir is just a part. In fact, you could have the Mass without singing. So, uh, and as such, we didn't uh, insist too much on uh, the choir uh, area of uh, uh, service, which is uh, unfortunate. But today, we see that uh, when we come to acculturation of the service, we see that uh, our people are very musical by nature. Start any song at all, a kid will be dancing. And uh, we soon join you clamping and uh, making her own type of, his own type of music. And, and as such, we have taken music very seriously in the church today. And uh, we encourage our choir to sing. And uh, as I've told you before, there was a priest in those days when the tradition was coming to Africa that uh, we serve God in our own way of uh, life and culture. There was one Father Sanusi who brought uh, Tewa Bebowa into Nigeria. We still sing that song today. Another talented priests and lay people are brought in a lot of inculturated music into the church. And our choir today is flourish, flourishing. Uh, in fact, we have a bishop who is very musical. Uh, that is uh, uh, the bishop of uh, Oyo Diocese, uh, Badejo. He's, uh, he's, uh, almost every part of the body is music. Uh, he, in his diocese, no youth can complain that uh, he's not encouraged in musical production. And as you have started it in a, in a very earnest way, I encourage you to continue. It has started, it's growing. Their complaint is valid for the past, not for the present. And as such, we normally in the past, we leave everything to the priest. The lay people, and become leaders in a music production for the church. It's not only the priest who can uh, uh, inaugurate it. However, the words of the music is very, very important. We have our liturgical, uh, liturgical uh, layout 
and the doctrine that must be followed. Like how we sing the Gloria, the Creed, the Benediction hymns, the Cross of the Mass. The theological aspects must be clear. And uh, we can put our own tunes into this music. This is how it grew in uh, Europe that we, can, we had uh, people like uh, uh, Bach and uh, so many high sounding musicians in the past, in Europe and uh, America. So we can have our own two in, in uh, Nigeria. Youths who are interested in music as you are encouraging, others can encourage them too. However, we have a problem with our youth today. Without money, they are not interested. And unfortunately, we priests, we make the mistake that uh, since we don't work for money, we expect others to work not for money. We, some of us that make or some of us make that mistake. They should have some remuneration that uh, can keep them uh, going in like that. They are not just singing for nothing. If they are in the choir, they should be encouraged. Just as the priest is encouraged too. They too are ministers of one type of one way or the other. Uh, uh, I discovered when I was in the ministry that when you form a body to help the church and come for a meeting and the rest of it, they will come once or twice and once there is no remuneration, you will see them the fifth time. So we should think of this area. But at the same time, we should teach, teach our youths not to rely too much on the uh, gains of uh, financial gains from uh, everything they do. Uh, that you be able to be generous with your service to the people. Uh, I used to say that uh, in the TV values that human beings uh, look after, number one, which is the least of them all in importance, is money. Everybody wants money. It is good. Uh, even as we say in the church that uh, money is the vehicle of evangelization. That is very true. But Money is uh, not the be all and the end all of it, as James will tell us that the love of money is the root of all problems. And the love of money is when you want money for money's sake, not for the use of it. So we should teach, teach our youths today that money is for use, not for accumulation. That when you have enough to sustain your life and use for your means of uh, uh, work and uh, living comfortably, you don't need to store millions in the bank. By stopping storing millions and billions in the bank, that is definite that we are depriving some people of what they need in life. That is why there's poverty in the country, because money is not spread out. So uh, our youth need to be content with what they need in life and uh, whatever is left over to help others with it. So that uh, the more you are useful to the society, the more people will always remember you. Music has a talent. It's a sort of vocation. People discover that they are musically talented. Then their production depends on their background, either in the world or in the church. It's their thoughts that they put into music. Now, what we call secular and uh, religious music. Secular music is any song that uh, is not religiously oriented, and a religious music is what is purely. Uh, religious, uh, having a religious orientation. There's not, nothing wrong with both. So, as a musician, if you are really having a religious background, you just sing religious songs without you knowing that uh, 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 you don't need to be, uh, how do I put it? You don't need to resolve that I'm going to compose religious music today. It just comes. Uh, a good example is when you are at ease 
and you just find yourself just singing without thinking, without uh, meditating and trying to sing, without resolving to sing, you just start a song. It's you coming on out. This is how people compose music. The next thing is make, educate them in the religious aspect of life. If that religion is in them, it will come out in their music. But if the world takes over and it is immorality that is uh, coming out in them, it's a moral song they will sing it. So, uh, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So, how to make them grow with religious uh, mentality so that uh, it's inborn in them that uh, uh, without uh, any formal preparation, just see them saying, Aki or Jesu, not benediction, just at home. <laughs> So that is very, very important to imbue them with religious ideas. It will come out in their music. Without religious ideas, it will come. Those who are with us, if they were imbued with religious ideas, they will put it in their song outside. I'll give you a good example about our cultural musicians in those days. The folklore of the past is so much embedded in them that they bring out in the modern music. And people enjoy it and dance differently from the past, according to the uh, music of today. Folklore. But without the idea of the folklore, they couldn't put into, they wouldn't be able to put into music. The same thing when some people said they are gospel uh, musicians. Their music cannot go beyond their knowledge of the gospel. If they don't have the correct knowledge of the gospel, they will sing it with uh, uh, bad doctrine. <laughs> but if they have the cor correct knowledge, they will sing it according to the correct way. So how do we imbue our musicians with Christian ideas? With that idea, it will be good. Then whether they go uh, in the choir for the church or they are in choir in, in the world, the idea of the, uh, the music they have will be there. You have Mozart, you have Bach, the German musicians, the Hallelujah song. It's all Christian. And yet, uh, it's, uh, it's social music. And uh, we cannot call it a religious music because they didn't be, it wasn't intended for the church. It's their talent. And uh, what they are imbued is the religion they knew, they put into music. And uh, Today, whenever everybody is singing hallelujah song, we say, stand up. <laughs> hallelujah is Christ they are praising. <laughs> and that is what was in Mozart, the way he was brought up. But uh, if you are brought up to be, what we call a Satan worshiper, <laughs> it will be the other way around. For the spirit and sound outreach, I give you my congratulations and you are my prayers. I will try my best to bring this idea across to my bishop brothers who are in the ministry because we are retired now. Esteemed viewers, thank you for watching this video. If you are yet to subscribe to our YouTube channel, kindly click on the subscribe button below and the notification bell beside so that you'll be notified when we post a new video our instagram handle is spirit and sound outreach and you can like our page on facebook spirit and sound outreach thank you for being here god bless you